The new iPad Pros have just been announced today, and let's just say that they're more pro than ever. Samsung has just introduced two new imaging sensors that we might see in the Galaxy S10 with 48 megapixels. And if your Pixel 3 XL just grew a second notch, don't panic. I know it's horrible, but you're not alone. I'm Jaime Rivera, and don't worry, not everything that we're gonna talk about today is focused on Apple. There are some really cool things. This is Pocket Now Daily. Let's uh, switch the scheme a little bit. Uh, let's not begin with official news because, uh, well, there are a ton of those. Uh, for those of you having issues with the Google Pixel 3 XL where you've noticed the second horrible notch growing, uh, you're not alone. Google actually hasn't really figured out what's causing this. There is an option within developer options in the Pixel where you can enable that second notch on the bottom, but it's not supposed to just pop up on its own. So stay tuned. I'm not having issues with mine, but apparently it's uh, something normal right now. Now let's talk about Samsung as uh, the company has just announced two new ISOCELL sensors. And before you start, uh, you know, just frowning and everything, because I know ISOCELL sensors from Samsung have never been really great. Let's just remember that there are cases where you can't really tell if you're using a Sony sensor or an ISOCELL sensor on a Galaxy phone and they take great photos. So the company has just announced two. Uh, they've got weird code names, but uh, one of them is a 48 megapixels and the other one is a 32. And uh, yes, we know that there is a new Sony 48 megapixel camera sensor as well, which makes me wonder if it's some sort of a collaboration that we could be seeing in the Galaxy S10 in the future. You can learn more in the description. Now let's talk about the brand new Mac Mini. And uh, I know that a lot of you are like, Mac Mini? Yes, the last time Apple launched one of these was nearly half a decade ago or updated them. I don't know. Whatever the case may be, I have one. I know a lot of people that like them. And now you can pretty much turn this into a full pro computer to a certain degree with options of up to 32 gigs and two terabytes of storage. And you've got a ton of I.O. at the back. And it starts at $799, but then when you look at what you get for $7.99, you're not really getting much. Uh, so uh, buyers beware. I'm not saying it's a bad product. I'm just saying it's not as cheap as the Mac mini was intended to be. Now let's talk about the brand new MacBook Air. And you know, I'm not gonna lie, I've been considering uh, getting a MacBook or getting a 13 inch MacBook Pro just to make my experience editing video while on the go easier and then having the 15 inch MacBook Pro here. But my God, that 13 inch MacBook Air uh, makes a lot of sense. You get a Retina display, you get Touch ID, you get a larger trackpad, better keyboard, you get two Thunderbolt 3 ports, which is hard to find today, even on a ton of Windows computers. And the specifications look okay. They're not necessarily the best when it comes to the processing power, but because it's got Thunderbolt 3, you can connect an eGPU to this thing. So I'm already scratching my head and wondering if I should just give this a try. We'll keep you posted because the price is not cheap. It starts pretty much at 1200 bucks and we go back to the topic. It's not really a great computer if you buy the entry level variant. And finally, the hot news today have to do with the product that I am waiting for most new iPad Pros. I was expecting a new iPad mini uh, that would, you know, do more things, but there's not. This new iPad Pro is something else because it's completely changed this design. It actually looks like the first generation iPad with uh, pretty much the boxy corners. Uh, it's now got Face ID and now it's got USB-C, which enables so many things, but makes me wonder why there wasn't also a lightning cable connector somewhere because uh, I actually have lightning cable accessories, so I wonder if there will be a dongle for that. And it's such an irony that Apple has this just crazy nightmare of, of I don't know, proprietary things here and there, but USB-C is great, the display looks amazing, um, and I'm really looking forward to it, but then we go back to what I've said about the Mac Mini and what I've said about the MacBook Air. It's not a cheap, tablet and it starts at 64 gigs and then if you want to go maxed out we were doing the numbers it's 1200 dollars if you want to include the new apple pencil because the old one doesn't work with it uh, and if you want to get that keyboard which actually looks cool uh, and if you want to get 256 gigs of storage so let me know in the comments down below what do you think i mean i saw photoshop on a tablet work and i thought that was great but for 1200 bucks i'd rather get a new macbook air that would be me leave us a comment down below let me know what you think Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to both our channels, English and Spanish, for more videos like this one. You can follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera, on Instagram at Jaime Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.